this countdown we have Bison Deli. Bison Deli, formerly known as Brian Williams, was an NBA player who played center for Orlando Magic, Denver Nuggets, LA Clippers, Chicago Bulls, and Detroit Pistons. In 1997, he won the NBA championships with the Chicago Bulls. He retired early and went around traveling the world and sailing around. In 2002, he headed out on a ship with his girlfriend and older brother. Sadly, none of them would ever make it back. The captain, Deli, and his girlfriend disappeared and were never seen again. Two weeks later, the boat was found in Tahiti. The only passenger was Deli's brother, Miles, who was dead. He had overdosed on insulin and slipped into a coma. So what happened on that ship? Well, there's no way we could possibly know, but police believe that Miles killed everyone on board, dumped their bodies into the ocean before overdosing. But this has never been confirmed. Moving on to number nine, we have Jim Sullivan. Jim Sullivan was a 35 year old musician that disappeared on a solo road trip in 1975. He left Los Angeles and planned to go to Nashville in search of more work. It was said that he checked into La Mez Hotel in Santa Rosa, New Mexico, but he he never even slept there. The next day he was spotted at a remote ranch. There his car was found abandoned, containing money, his guitar and clothes. He was last seen walking away from the ranch. That's the last time anyone ever saw Jim. Now a day before he went missing, he called his wife, Barbara, and told her that he was alright. But Barbara was like, okay yeah, I knew you were fine, so why are you calling? He responded with, you wouldn't believe if I told you. She then said, Jim, what's the matter? Is anything wrong? And he said, forget it. Just forget I said anything. I'll call you from Nashville. So that's kind of a weird conversation, especially when the next day he went missing. So what was it that happened to Jim? Now some believe that Jim was abducted by aliens or managed to make contact with them. I know it sounds crazy, but in 1969 he released an album titled UFO. So people believe maybe he was really into aliens and tried searching for them. Others believe he just wandered off on foot and got lost and then succumbed to the elements. Moving on to number 8 we have Sean Flynn. Sean Flynn was an American actor and photojournalist. He was probably best known for his coverage on the Vietnam War. He he grew up following in his dad's Errol Flynn's footsteps by becoming an actor, but later changed professions and started working for Time Magazine. In April of 1970, Flynn was sent to Cambodia on an assignment for Time Magazine. However, while there, he disappeared, never to be heard from again. It's believed that Flynn and his colleague were kidnapped, held captive, and then executed. But no evidence was found showing that they were actually murdered. In March of 2010, remains were discovered and they were believed to belong to Flynn. But upon DNA testing, they discovered that this was not the case. Meaning we might never know what really happened to him. In our seventh spot, we have Rico Harris. Rico Harris was a well known basketball player for the Harlem Globetrotters. Sadly, his dependence on alcohol really got to him and he was forced to stop playing and to get a different job. Sadly, that didn't work out for him either as he was later fired for drunkenness. After this, in 2014, he planned to live in Seattle with his long distance girlfriend that lived there. So he had just visited his mom in LA and then headed to go see his girl in Seattle. Sadly, he would never make it. His car was later found abandoned at the side of the road in Sacramento. The car was out of gas and had a nearly dead battery. In his car was his backpack and his phone with a video of him from that night. Harris, however, was nowhere to be found. Now, days after his disappearance, people did say that they saw a giant person walking along State Route 16, which could have been Harris since he was 6'9". So it could be that his car broke down during the drive and he left on foot to go try and find help. But we don't know what happened after that. Moving on to number 6 we have Scott Smith. Scott Smith was a Canadian musician and bassist for the rock band Loverboy. In November of 2000, Smith and some of his friends went on a little sailing trip from Vancouver to Mexico. Sadly, while on his trip, a large wave swept him off of his boat. He was never seen again. Despite a number of searches conducted by US Coast Guards, his body has never been found, which they found to be quite odd. Did a rogue wave really sweep him out to sea? Or did something more sinister happen? We're now at our fifth 
fifth and halfway mark with Joe Pitchler. Joe Pitchler was an American child actor known for being in movies such as Beethoven, The Fan, and Children on Their Birthdays. On January 5th, 2006, he went missing and hasn't been found since. On that day, he made a call to his friend at 4.15 p.m. That was the last time anyone has ever heard from him. On January 9th, his car was found near an intersection. All of his personal belongings were left in his car, except his wallet and car keys. Police found his apartment unlocked and his lights left on, which was very unusual of him. What's frustrating is that there is hardly any evidence in this case. Police really don't know what happened to Joe. Even with search dogs, they couldn't make much sense of his disappearance. So honestly, we probably will never know what happened. Moving on to number four, we have Lord Lucan. This story is pretty crazy, so just brace yourself. Lord Lucan, or Richard John Bingham, was a very wealthy aristocrat and prominent member of the London social scene mainly as a gambler. In 1974, he ended up killing his wife, Veronica, after she divorced him and got custody of the kids. The only problem being, he killed the wrong woman. I know, how could you mess that up? But apparently the room was dark and he thought it was his ex. But no, turns out it was the nanny. Anyways, after this happened, he basically fled to avoid being arrested and charged with murder. And it worked because he was never found. But rumor has it that he ended up drowning himself from guilt over what he had done, and that his body is at the bottom of the New Haven Harbor. In our third spot, we have Michael Rockefeller. Michael Clark Rockefeller was the fifth child of the 41st Vice President of the United States, Nelson Rockefeller. The fact that he was a Rockefeller made his disappearance that more bigger. People were shocked when he disappeared. In 1961, Michael was out boating when his boat overturned, and apparently he swam to shore to look for help. But that's the last we know of what happened to him. But it's believed that he was captured by members of a local tribe that killed and dismembered him. It's incredibly gruesome. Coming in at number two, we have Harold Holt. Imagine a huge world leader goes missing, like Trump or Biden. That would have the whole country shook. Well, that's what happened to Australia. Harold Holt was the 17th Prime Minister of Australia. In December of 1967, the Prime Minister went out swimming at a deserted beach in Victoria but he never made it back to shore. Apparently, the weather had been very bad that day. The waves were very high. When Holt went missing, the government felt ashamed. Like, how could they let that happen to their leader? Although his body was never found, in 2005, it was declared he had drowned. But of course, you got a handful of people that don't think this is the case and think something else happened to him. And in our number one spot, we have Patrick McDermott. Patrick McDermott is probably best known for being the boyfriend of Grease star Olivia Newton-John. He was also a cameraman and that's how the two originally met. It was on a set of a commercial he was shooting. Anyways, McDermott disappeared in 2005 after setting off for a fishing trip. He was meant to return the next day, but when he didn't, the US Coast Guards were called in to help. The boat was found with all his personal belongings on it. Ultimately, they concluded that he had fallen off of his boat. But there's a huge belief that he actually faked his own death. He did this in order to avoid the debt he was in. It gets even stranger when apparently a private investigator spotted a man in Mexico matching a very similar description to Patrick. So maybe that's where he's been hiding out for all of these years. But still, this hasn't been confirmed. Starting off this list at number 10, we have Kenny Beach. His real name is Kenneth Lee Beach, and he was an American YouTuber who posted videos of his hiking trips. He only ended up uploading five videos in total, but interacted a lot with other hiking channels, which helped him quickly gain popularity. Kenny was very proud of the toll his amazing and difficult hikes took on his body. He even said it took him three days to recover from his hikes usually, and that sometimes his toenails would even turn black and fall off. Near the end of 2014, Kenny posted a comment on a video that explained that while he normally enters every single cave he finds, when he found one that was shaped like an M and began to enter it, his whole body began to vibrate, and the closer he got, the feeling became more intense. The feeling really freaked him out, so he ended up getting out of there as quickly as possible. After this comment, tons of other users encouraged him to try and find the cave again and fight the eerie feeling and go inside and to make a video of it. 
Kenny did exactly this and made a video that ended up being his most viewed video titled M Cave Hike. Unfortunately, he was unable to find the same cave again. Viewers were upset that he was unable to find it and they quickly started pushing for him to look again, but there were a few comments begging Kenny to leave it alone and not to go back, fearing that he would be putting himself in a dangerous situation. On November 10th, 2014, Kenny set out once again to try and find the cave and explained to his family that he would just be going on a short overnight trip. Unfortunately, Kenny never returned home and the search began. His cell phone was discovered at the opening of an abandoned mine shaft, which many viewers thought they recognized from his M Cave hike video. Unfortunately, since then the trail has gone cold and Kenny still has yet to be located. While it is extremely unlikely, I really hope that he is still out there somewhere and hopefully one day we get the answers we're looking for and his family will get their much needed closure. Moving on in our number 9 spot we have the YouTube user Bill Smith. Bill Smith was part of the QAnon movement and posted a lot of videos that he claimed were secrets that the government doesn't want us to know about. He was an extremely frequent poster so it raised alarm bells when he just all of a sudden stopped posting videos. He never gave any indication that he wanted to stop posting videos and his last video honestly made it seem like he had every intention to continue with him saying he will fight with everything he has and that he was all in. There are a lot of theories about where he could have gone that include him being investigated by Homeland Security or if there were any truth to his claims potentially being taken into custody. People also believe that if his channel did become active again that it would be the government covering their tracks and uploading on his behalf. It's a lot of speculation, but at the end of the day, who is Bill Smith and where did he go? Moving on to number 8, we have the user Paranormal Lana, who also was known by the name Alana G. She was a pretty popular YouTuber with over 50,000 subscribers and mostly covered content that was either paranormal, spooky in some way, or real events. On September 3rd, 2015, her channel was just suddenly deleted as well as all of her social media accounts. This quickly became a huge topic of conversation among other YouTubers who were in the same genre as Alana. One person began to point out that just prior to her disappearance from the internet, she had posted a series of tweets explaining that she had a pretty serious stalker incident and she was having to change how her social medias were being managed. Although many cyber sleuths have looked into where she could have gone, no one is exactly certain of what happened to her. If she really did have a stalker, maybe disappearing was the only thing she could do. I just hope that she is safe wherever she ended up. Moving on down to number 7, we have Shima Luan. Shima Luan was an American YouTuber who worked for the channel Super Planet Dolan. It was an animated channel and Shima was one of the most active characters on the channel and was well liked by those who watched. In 2016, in a video called The Future of Planet Dolan, they explained that Shima had suddenly fallen out of contact with the other people on the channel, but the last time they spoke, she was safe, so they didn't suspect anything bad. Of course, a lot of viewers didn't believe this and began to speculate that this was the crew trying to cover up her disappearance. In February of this year, a YouTuber called Scarce Theater made a video taking a look into Shima's disappearance, and one of the members of the Dolan crew left a comment that may have cleared some things up for us. The comment read, It's sort of an unsolvable mystery to those who don't know her, because to solve it in a satisfying way publicly, we'd have to invade the actress who played Shima's personal life on a public level. No one who walks away from a job in entertainment wants to be dragged out in the public and shown around. That would be ghoulish. In respect to the privacy of others, all I can say is that this is one of the better videos on the topic. Everyone else fell into trappings of teasing ideas of conspiracy and horror. Truth is, we always had trouble getting folks to separate the cartoons from the actors. This definitely leads us to believe that Shima had her reasons for leaving the channel, but it truly is none of our business. It's easy to forget that some of our favorite creators are also real people who deserve to have their lives kept private, if they so choose. While we miss Shima's content, it's good to know that she is safe. Coming in at number 6 we have the YouTubers who went by Mac Adventures. They were a father and son channel with a destination of Area 51. In 2016 they had posted a video of them finally arriving at the Area 51 border. As they arrive at the border a couple of agents in full camo gear pull up to them in a truck, get out with guns in their hands and basically ask them to leave the premises. After the video was posted they released one more video and then an extended version of their original Area 51 video and then and they went totally silent. 
All of their social media were blown up with people believing that the Area 51 video was fake, which has led some people to believe that they just decided they didn't want to continue creating content because of the negativity, but that's not what everyone believed. A lot of people believe that maybe they had just gone back to Area 51 and tried to get further into the closed off area than last time and ended up getting arrested or maybe even worse. After a few years of people speculating and wondering what happened to them, last year there was finally an update. The son of the duo ended up doing a YouTube live stream where it was finally explained that they had just decided to take a break and it ended up becoming more of a permanent decision than they had originally planned on. While this is sort of an anticlimactic ending, it's definitely the best outcome that could have happened. At our halfway mark in our number 5 spot we have the user Kev Jumba whose real name is Kevin Wu. Kevin was one of the first YouTube stars joining the platform all the way back in 2006 and by 2008 he was the third most subscribed to channel. Kevin used his YouTube success to go on a season of The Amazing Race as well as even landing a role in a Hollywood film, Revenge of the Green Dragons. He slowly began to post videos less frequently and eventually made his channel entirely private, moving his focus more to the other aspects of his career. Things took a turn though in 2015 when he kind of just entirely disappeared for a while. People began to get really worried about Kevin and rumors began to swirl about what could have happened and where he could have gone. Luckily we eventually heard from Kevin again, but in an unfortunate turn of events, he explained that the reason for his disappearance is because he had been hit by a car and suffered some pretty serious injuries. The accident left him with a broken spine and a collapsed lung, as well as a number of psychological injuries. He has since been focusing on his recovery and credits his dad for really helping nurse him back to health. While it is obviously extremely traumatic and upsetting that he had to go through this near death experience, we're just glad that he was able to make it through and recover. Continuing on to number 4 we have Spy Kitten TV who was also known as Dasha. Dasha made a lot of videos about the Illuminati and people that she suspected were members. Her last video was posted in July of 2018 and while all of her social media profiles remain up and active, no one has heard from her or seen a post since. It is possible that she just decided to leave the internet life behind, but it is kind of curious that she didn't leave any sort of farewell. People have speculated that she was exposing too many secrets and ended up being kidnapped or silenced by the Illuminati, while others believe that she met some sort of ill fate in another way. I'm sure those in her personal life know what happened to her, and while I wish someone could give us some sort of update, I suppose it really is none of our business unless they decide they want to share. Hopefully she is out there somewhere and maybe someday we'll know what happened and where she went. Coming in at number 3 we have Marina Joyce. Marina was a popular makeup and fashion YouTuber and had a large 2.1 million following. People began noticing that something just wasn't right about her behavior in her new videos, feeling like she was more distracted. This led them to believe that she could be scared or in some kind of danger. Eventually people noticed a gun in the background of one of her videos, bruises on her arms, and people said she wasn't blinking as much, and even swore that they heard her whisper, help me. In 2019, Marina ended up going missing for 10 days. While she was missing, her boyfriend was tweeting that she was safe, even though the police had an active investigation into her whereabouts, and he tried to shut down any claims that he was acting suspiciously, even though it's super suspicious to say that a missing person is safe when no one knows where they are. After it was confirmed that Marina had been found, she tweeted that she never actually went missing, even though, like I mentioned before, the police were actively looking for her. She claimed that her suspicious boyfriend had been taking care of her. There are a lot of speculations about what happened and why she disappeared for that time, but she claims that she is not in any sort of toxic relationship and just wants her fans to watch her videos and stop worrying. Hopefully she really is okay and fans were just reading into things that weren't actually anything, but it's a super bizarre situation. Continuing on to number 2 we have Kaylee Elise. Kaylee was a true crime YouTuber who covered things like missing people and unsolved crimes. In 2019 we did get a heads up from Kaylee that she would unfortunately be leaving the platform due to some health concerns that she was facing and in a live stream goodbye she assured fans that she would keep her videos up for everyone to continue enjoying. This is all fine and well but people got very concerned a few months later. In December of 2019 her entire channel was deleted. It caused a lot of fans to worry about what happened to her and if her health concerns worsened after she left the channel. 
Unfortunately, there hasn't been an update this year on what happened or what led to the deletion of her channel, but some people have begun re-uploading her videos so that people can continue to enjoy the content. Wherever she is, I hope she's able to take care of her health concerns and focus on herself. Finishing off this list in our number one spot, we have the strange disappearance of Nicholas Sonderegger. Nick was a fairly small but growing YouTuber with 2,000 subscribers and was featured on the YouTube channel Explore With Us. Nick was 28 at the time of his disappearance and was last seen on September 7th, 2018 around 2.30 a.m. He had heard a female screaming outside of his home in Salton Beach, California and went to investigate. After he failed to return home that night, he was reported missing the next morning. Some of his clothing that he had left in was found by the search parties, but it is still unknown what happened to him or where he could be. It's really upsetting that he obviously went to go and help someone who seemed to be in despair and it led to trouble for him. It certainly shows his courage and bravery. There is a $10,000 reward for any information that leads to his whereabouts, so if any viewers have information, please contact the Imperial County Sheriff's Office. Someone somewhere has to know something about where he could be, and I hope that one day his family gets answers and closure. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Orlando Brown. That's So Raven is an absolutely iconic Disney Channel show that was a huge part of my childhood. One standout character on the show was one of Raven's best friends, Eddie Thomas. Eddie was a goofy jock type character who always provided some good comedic relief, even though all of the characters in that show had their own hilarious moments. Eddie was played by Orlando Brown, and after That So Raven stopped filming, he had a few more Disney roles, such as voicing the character of Sticky on The Proud Family, but then for a long time he totally disappeared from our screens and had a lot of people asking where he went. Well, he resurfaced after a while and not in the way we would have thought. While he did end up having a small role in the movie Straight Outta Compton, that was greatly overshadowed by some more personal things he had going on. Orlando was arrested for a domestic dispute with his then girlfriend as well as being in possession of illicit substances. Since then he has mainly stayed out of the public eye and hasn't seen many acting roles, which could be in part due to his tumultuous history. All in all, I hope Orlando is doing well and I hope he stays out of trouble. Moving on to number nine, we have Ashley Brillalt. Before I dive into this one, guys, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far because it really helps us out. Lizzie McGuire is a Disney classic that a lot of us remember from growing up, and we will never be able to forget the iconic mean girl role of Kate Sanders. Kate had all the best looks and lived a life that I used to envy, aside from her being pretty rude a lot of the time. Kate was played by a woman named Ashley Brillalt, and watching Lizzie McGuire as a preteen is the last time I can remember seeing her, so where the heck did she go? Well, as it turns out, after the show finished, Ashley decided to walk away from her acting days and leave her life of fame. She ended up attending California State University where she received her BA, and then she moved to Colorado where she attended the University of Denver. She is now a lawyer and she is married and has been focusing on her family and being a mom. Career-wise, she is focusing on criminal justice reform and she also is a strong supporter of numerous charities. While the character of Kate did have some redeeming qualities and moments, it seems as though Ashley is definitely not at all the mean girl that she used to play. In our number 8 spot today we have Tiffany Thornton. Sunny with a Chance was a show that was airing when I was just getting out of my Disney watching days, but I am sure there are many of you out there who remember this show very well. While short lived, it was one of the Disney shows where Demi Lovato got her start, of course aside from the iconic Camp Rock movies. While Demi has continuously been in the spotlight since these days, that is not true for all of her former castmates particularly for Tiffany Thornton, who played the role of the diva, Tawny Hart. Tiffany ended up leading the Sunny with a Chance spinoff, but after both shows ended, we truly didn't hear much from her after, which left us all wondering, where had she gone? As it turns out, there isn't much of a crazy story here. Tiffany simply found herself with an opportunity to focus on other things aside from acting, and she took it. She chose to leave her Disney days behind in favor of a life where she could focus on her family and her children. Not many people realize how difficult it can be to be a full-time actor who has a family, so I can totally understand why Tiffany took these steps, and I can appreciate her making the choices she felt were best for her. In her number seven spot, 
spot today we have Kylie Williams. I don't even know what to say about the Cheetah Girls other than the fact that those soundtracks played repeatedly in my home as a child. Between being absolutely jealous of the lives these girls were living to being empowered by the messages of these movies, the Cheetah Girls is an iconic series of movies that will forever live in my heart. But we are not here to talk about my love for the Cheetah Girls. Right now we are talking about Kylie Williams who played the character of Aqua in the movies. After the breakup of the Cheetah Girls we saw Kylie pursue music for a short while but then we pretty much stopped hearing from her altogether which left us all wondering where she went. While I don't have a lot of information on why she stepped out of the spotlight, she did. During this time she got married and started a family and she now has a daughter named Rowan who was born in 2018. For a while she had an internet series with former co-star Sabrina Bryant but that YouTube channel hasn't seen an upload in the last three years. Creatively I'm not sure what she is up to now but you can still find her on Instagram where she regularly posts photos of herself and her beautiful family. In our number 6 spot today we have Raviv Ullman. Phil of the Future was a Disney show that aired from 2004 to 2006 and was about a family who was from the future but who got stuck in the 21st century after their time machine broke down. I remember watching this show growing up but a lot of it certainly does feel like some sort of a fever dream. The show's titular character Phil was played by an actor who used to go by the name Ricky Ullman but we didn't see a lot of him after the show ended which of course left people wondering. Well, Ricky now goes by the name Raviv which appears to have been his real name all along and he used to just prefer his nickname. Name. Since the ending of Phil of the Future, Raviv might have disappeared from our screens but he has remained as creative as ever, starring in a few different off-Broadway productions as well as playing in two different bands called Goodbye Ian and his orchestra. It's good to know that Raviv is still out there creating art and if anyone ends up listening to his music, make sure you let me know how it is. In our number 5 spot today we have Kay Panabaker. Another member of the Phil of the Future team we haven't seen since the end of the show is actually Actor Kay Panabaker, who played the character of Debbie Berwick. Debbie was known as the extremely chipper and good natured character, and she was unfortunately written out of the show before the first season ended. After the show, Kay had a few other smaller roles, but she ultimately decided to leave acting altogether after this. You may be wondering what she has been up to and where she has been in the last decade, and thankfully, I have the answer for you. Kay ended up attending university at UCLA, where she studied zoology. After her graduation, she actually somehow ended up back in the land of Disney when she took a full time job working at Disney's Animal Kingdom. I'm sure that is an extremely cool job and I think it's pretty awesome that she started out on Disney and after all those years found herself back at Disney in a completely different capacity. In our number 4 spot today we have Alana Austin. Motocross was released in 2001 and was a favorite Disney Channel original movie about a young woman who had to hide her gender so that she could compete in a male dominated motocross competition. It was a super cool movie that I believe had a good and empowering message in the end from what I can remember and the movie starred Alana Austin who we didn't see much of after this iconic role. After this movie Alana apparently did some small acting roles here and there but nothing really ever big and nothing after 2006. After leaving the limelight she decided to switch her focus from acting to something different and this is when she went to the University of Southern California in order to study pre-medicine. Alana can still be found on Instagram where she shares photos of her life and her family and hey, maybe one day we'll see her return to our screens but as long as she is happy, that is all we need to hear. In our number 3 spot today we have Lelaine. Another integral part of the cast of Lizzie McGuire was one of Lizzie's best friends, Miranda, who was played by Lelaine. Since we have heard many rumors of a Lizzie reboot, this has left a lot of fans wondering where Lelaine has been since her days on the show. Lelaine Lane has released some music and done a bit of acting since those days, but she has mostly stepped out of the spotlight, especially in the last decade. I'm not exactly sure if there was a reason for this or not, but it seems as though she may be getting back into the acting game as she recently filmed a movie last year that is in the post production stages. Her break from the spotlight may have been due to a bit of a rough patch she went through in 2007, where she was arrested due to possession of illicit substances, which was then exacerbated after she missed.
against a court hearing. In a turn of good news, however, Lilane completed her mandatory rehabilitation and, as far as I know, has remained in a better place ever since, which is truly the most important thing. If that Lizzie reboot does end up happening, it would be great to see her reprise her role because I would absolutely love to see Lizzie, Miranda, and Gordo all back together just for one day. In our number two spot today, we have Dennis Day. This one story is a bit different than the others on this list, and it is significantly darker. Dennis Day was an actor and an original cast member of the Mickey Mouse Club as a child. After his child star days ended, he became a theater director. In 2009, Dennis married his longtime partner, Henry Ernest Caswell. In July of 2018, Henry, who was suffering from dementia, was admitted into the hospital after a fall, and this is when Dennis went missing. He was last seen on July 17, 2018, after telling a third housemate, who was also a handyman, that he was going to visit friends. Dennis had left his cat and dog at home, and the dog was found shortly after wandering around the neighborhood. The day after Dennis's disappearance, his car was found around 200 miles away, in the possession of some random people who claimed that they had permission to take it, despite the fact that Dennis left the previous day on foot. To try and sum up this long, multi-layered story, one of Dennis's neighbors had a letter from Dennis where he describes being attacked by the handyman. Dennis was missing for quite some time, and despite many, many searches and a lot of publicity about this case, it wasn't until almost a year later that his body was found. He ended up being found on his own property, and while his cause of death was not released, the handyman, who was a 36-year-old man named Daniel James Berta, was charged with several crimes in connection to Dennis's death, including manslaughter, criminally negligent homicide, and identity theft. It appears as though there was some altercation between the two after Dennis told Daniel that he didn't want him living in his home anymore, but it isn't completely clear what happened after. Daniel has since been deemed unfit to stand trial, so he has instead been admitted into a hospital where he will reside until further notice. In our number one spot today, we have Stephen Anthony Lawrence. Even Stevens was another one of those absolutely iconic Disney Channel shows. It is where Shia LaBeouf really got his start, but we all know who truly stole the show, and that is the beloved character of Beans. Beans was played by an actor named Stephen Anthony Lawrence, and his role was originally supposed to just be a featured role, but he quickly turned into a series regular. Beans was an extremely lovable and goofy character that was impossible not to absolutely love, but after the show ended, while we saw a bit of him for a while, he mostly disappeared from our screens, which is a tragic loss. Many people began to worry that he may have possibly fallen down the dark path that many child stars have been known to go down, but there is some good news. That is not the case at all. After Even Stevens ended, Steven went on to have a few more acting roles, but he began experiencing male pattern baldness at the very young age of 14, which made it extremely difficult to book acting roles as a teenager. After this, when he was in his 20s, Steven's father unfortunately ended up being diagnosed with cancer and was his primary caregiver. Steven actually unfortunately lost both of his parents to cancer, and he put his career on hold in order to take care of them both. He explained that being an actor while trying to go through something like that is next to impossible, which I can completely understand. Steven has obviously lived quite a life for someone so young, and maybe one day we'll see him try his hand at acting again, but for now you can find him on Cameo as well as on YouTube where he hosts his own show called The Rice and Beans Show. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Sabrina Bryan. You guys, in part one of this video, I talked about the Cheetah Girls and how absolutely iconic it is, so it's time we talk about another one of the movie's best known characters that has disappeared from our screens. Sabrina Bryan played the amazing dancer Dorinda in the movie. She was in all three of the movies, but we truly haven't seen much of her since. So where has she been? Well, she has certainly had a few TV and movie roles since and has even dabbled in voice acting, but nothing ever huge there. She was on Dancing with the Stars twice, most recently in 2012 when she got brought back for an all-star season since she absolutely smashed it. I mean, she was the first contestant to ever get a perfect score from the judges. In 2017, she ended up being engaged, and we saw her on an episode of Say Yes to the Dress as she prepared for her Las Vegas wedding. 
In late 2020, she welcomed her first child, a daughter named Camilla Monroe. In our number nine spot today, we have Kimberly J. Brown. Before I dive into this one, guys, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far because it really helps us out. Is it really Halloween time without the Disney staple Halloween Town? Those movies would have been nothing without Marnie, aka Kimberly J. Brown. I am not ready to talk about how they replaced Kimberly with Sarah Paxton in the fourth movie like that wasn't committing a crime, but what I am ready and here to talk about today is where the heck did Kimberly go? After her role as Marnie, we truly haven't seen a ton of her since. She has definitely done a few TV and movie spots here and there, but nothing too huge or crazy. She went to university where she got a Bachelor of Science in Business, and she now runs her own Etsy shop called Craftly Creative that sells a variety of things, but also some Halloween Town themed items as well. In a crazy turn of events, she is also dating another Halloween Town legend, Daniel Counts, who played Cal in the second film. He is now a realtor, if you were wondering. It is good to know they are both doing well and thriving. In our number 8 spot today, we have Jennifer Stone. When we think of Wizards of Waverly Place, we normally think of Selena Gomez, but Wizards wouldn't have been what it was without lovable, quirky Harper Finkel, who was played by the amazing Jennifer Stone. While Selena went on to be a huge superstar, as we all know, that life truly isn't for everyone, which left us wondering where Jennifer went and what she's been up to. It seems as though Jennifer decided to take a step back from the spotlight for a while and turn her focus somewhere else. She ended up becoming a nurse, which is incredible. Obviously an extremely selfless career that is so necessary. In 2021, she still continues to work as a nurse, but she has also returned to the acting world as well. In our number seven spot today, we have Christy Romano. What is a show about a wild and crazy boy without him having a strict and level-headed older sister? Christy Romano played Ren in Even Stevens and was the older sibling to Shia LaBeouf's insane character of Lewis. She was also the voice of Kim Possible, so it's safe to say she was working on some pretty iconic iconic Disney shows for a while, but since the ending of these shows, we haven't seen her on our screens as much. Well, after these shows ended, she unfortunately endured some struggles with both her mental health and with alcohol as well, but in an amazing turn of events, she was able to get the help that she needed. She ended up attending Barnard College where she met the man who is now her husband and the pair now have two absolutely beautiful daughters. In our number six spot today, we have Will Fradel. There aren't even words to describe how great of a show Boy Meets World was. It truly is a show that encapsulates my childhood and it would not have been what it was without Will and his amazing portrayal of Eric Matthews, who was Corey's insane older brother. Since the ending of the show, he kind of seemed to disappear from our view, but what I didn't know is how successful his career in voice work has been. He has been working pretty consistently in that industry since the ending of the show, and he even voiced Ron Stoppable in Kim Possible, which I had no idea about until now. Will was actually called out last year in 2020 by a fellow former Boy Meets World castmate, Trina McGee, who played Angela on the show. She detailed some racially insensitive comments that Will had made to her while they were co-stars, while she explained just her overall experience of working on the show. It was upsetting to know that a show I loved so much was having these kinds of dark things going on behind the scenes, but it is amazing that even after all of these years, Trina has been able to speak up about it and open the dialogue between herself and her former castmates. Nothing will ever undo what she experienced, but I hope telling her story and having these conversations has brought her some peace, and I think it's pretty exceptional that she is so compassionate that she has found a way to forgive her former castmates, and she uses her experience as a moment to teach rather than a moment to shame. I guess that one kind of turned into uh, what happened to Trina McGee, but I mean, we had to talk about it. I couldn't talk about Will and not bring up Trina for being a real one. And we found out where Will was. He's just voice acting. He was on an episode of Girl Meets World. So he's good, you know, he's good. We had to talk about it. In our number five spot today, we have Brandon Baker. Brandon Baker is from a Disney movie that truly feels like some sort of a fever dream to me. Brandon was the awesome surfer in the 1999 movie Johnny Tsunami, and that sort of kicked off his Disney career for a while. He was in the Johnny Tsunami sequel, as well as appearing in Even Stevens and Camp Confidential. While he seemingly had a thriving Disney career for a while in the early 2000s, he just kind of disappeared. Well, as it turns out, this was actually intentional. 
Acting at any age is a pretty all-consuming job, but being a child star is certainly not an easy ask. Brandon decided to leave the spotlight on his own accord in order to really be able to live his life. He said, I took a brief life-examining sabbatical to kind of explore, travel, and just figure out what really drives me. I worked a lot behind the camera on short films and was still working on sets, among other things, but just taking a break from acting to see just whether or not I missed it, and also just to give myself a chance to mature and grow up and approach it as an adult. Not everyone is able to take a step back and realize that the hard choice is sometimes the best choice for your own happiness, so it is very good to hear that Brandon was able to live his life and choose to return to acting when it felt right for him. In our number four spot today, we have Mitchell Musso. Mitchell Musso is best known for his role of Oliver Oaken, who is the goofy male best friend of Hannah Montana. Since the show and his character were incredibly successful, he actually got the opportunity to have his own show called Pair of Kings on Disney XD. He was also in the midst of starting another show called Prank Stars when he ran into some trouble. In 2011, he was pulled over and actually arrested for driving under the influence. Because of his clean criminal history, he was able to be released on bail and definitely took responsibility for his actions, but unfortunately, this move cost him both of the shows that he was working on. Since then, we truly haven't seen as much of him on our screens. He tried pursuing a music career briefly, but that didn't necessarily pan out in the best way. Most recently, however, he worked as a voice actor on the Phineas and Ferb movie that was released on Disney Plus last year. In our number three spot today, we have Adam Lamberg. Okay, if you watched Lizzie McGuire as a kid, we know Hilary Duff was obviously the star of the show, but true Lizzie fans know that Gordo was the one who stole the show. I mean, just think about him in the Lizzie movie, you guys. Adam Lamberg was the one who played the truly iconic role of Gordo, and he had all of us shipping him with Lizzie, even though we never really got a chance to see that entirely. After the series ended though, I feel like I just never saw him again. As it turns out, he actually decided to quit acting. He worked on two smaller films before deciding to focus on his education rather than starring in movies. He ended up studying geography at UC Berkeley and then went on to receive his Master of Public Administration. Since then, he worked as a developmental associate at the Irish Arts Center in New York, and while he was going to reprise his role in the Lizzie reboot for Disney+, Plus, as you may know, that was sadly cancelled. I'm not sure what he has been up to since then, but I really hope we get to see him sometime again soon. In our number two spot today, we have Jake Thomas. How could I possibly mention Lizzie McGuire again without mentioning Lizzie's annoying little brother, Matt, who was played by Jake Thomas. He was so perfect at being annoying and conniving and honestly just a bit of an evil genius. After Lizzie ended, he actually ended up on another Disney show called Cory in the House, but after that one ended as well, we really haven't seen him on our screens very much. He was in an episode of Criminal Minds and has since had a few roles on other shows that are similar, but nothing quite as large as his Disney days. While he continues his acting career, he also dabbles in directing and he is also a photographer. It's good to know that he continues to live an artistic life in a multitude of different ways. In our number one spot today, we have Matthew Timmons. When I think of The Sweet Life on Deck, I, of course, like many of you, think of the stars Cole and Dylan Sprouse, but we truly cannot forget the incredible incredibly goofy character of Woody Fink, who was played by Matthew Timmons. I don't remember seeing him before The Sweet Life, and I really don't remember seeing him after, except for that one episode of Jesse, which left me wondering where he went and what he's been up to. Well, while I don't really know what he's been up to career-wise, he is very present on social media and continues to make fans laugh. It's good to know that while he sure has grown up from his days of The Sweet Life, he has managed to keep his goofiness and silliness alive and well. Disney definitely isn't the place for him anymore, but maybe one day we'll see him return to our screens where he can most definitely keep us laughing. Starting off this countdown, we have Paul Walker. On November 30th, 2013, Paul Walker attended a charity event for Reach Out Worldwide. He was last captured driving off in a red Porsche Carrera GT. Little did he know that later that day, the car would crash into a concrete lamppost and two trees before bursting into flames, killing Walker and the driver instantly. It's so sad looking at this photo. Like, Paul seemed happy. He got into the car not knowing his fate. In fact, what makes this scarier is that he might have still been alive had it not been for one text. He woke up that morning completely forgetting about the charity event that he had to go to. That was until someone texted him to remind him. Had he not gone to the event and just stayed home, things would have been different. Coming in at number nine, we have Robin Williams, one of the greatest actors and comedic minds that has ever passed through Hollywood. There was movie after movie that 
that this guy made that influenced people from my generation and so many generations after. And right before we get further into this point, guys, remember that you can like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell and stick around to the end of the list because we're going to be answering some comments from our previous video, Top 10 Disney Mysteries. I mean, we can go down the list. This guy was in Aladdin, Jumanji, Mrs. Doubtfire. All of those movies were certified bangers. And this was the last picture of him before he passed. He looks so happy. He's chilling out with his monkey crystal and the two of them are just being the best of friends. But even having one of the coolest pets of all time wasn't enough to keep him happy. Unfortunately, shortly after this picture was taken, Robin Williams would visit the doctor and get a very sad diagnosis. It would seem that he had Parkinson's. It was devastating news that would lead to him taking his own life. Apparently, he was misdiagnosed and he actually had a specific type of dementia, which leads to paranoia. In our eighth spot, we have Amelia Earhart. The fate of Amelia Earhart is still unknown. Did she die in a plane crash? Did she get stranded on a deserted island? We honestly don't know. In 1937, Amelia set out with her navigator, Fred Noonan, to fly around the world. One of the last photos of Amelia was her packing her suitcase for travels, in which she would never return from. Much like these other celebrities, she looked so happy, just excited to go on this adventure. But little did she know it would end in tragedy. Amelia and Fred were last heard from on on July 2nd, 1937. The government spent 15 years looking for them. In fact, searching for Earhart was the largest and most expensive search in American history. Sadly, hardly anything came of this. They thought that maybe the plane crashed somewhere in the Pacific Ocean, but who really knows? Coming in at number seven, we have Gene Wilder. It's impressive how Gene Wilder was able to be both hilarious and terrifying in many of his performances. Like throughout most of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, he's kind of scary. But then when you check out Blazing Saddles, he's one of the funniest dudes around. This was the last picture taken of him, or at least the last one that was shared to the public. He lived well into his 80s, and in this picture you can see him with his daughter walking in Los Angeles. It was in 2013 when one of the most famous actors in the world would learn that he was battling Alzheimer's. This is obviously a very strenuous disease, and it can slowly wither a person away. It's a tough battle, and because of this, Gene wanted to stay out of the public eye. So after he was told by Doc doctors that he was fighting Alzheimer's, he decided that he would stay out of the peering eye of fans and become a homebody. And I mean, it sounds like a solid move. You had an amazing career, so in your last few years it would be nice to relax. He passed away in 2016. Coming in at number 6 we have Chris McCandless. Chris was a 24 year old American adventurer. In 1992, Chris set out on another adventure, this time into the Alaskan wilderness. However, he never made it out alive. His death has been debated for years. Some say he died of starvation. Others believe that he died of poisoning after eating toxic berries. The last photo ever captured of Chris was a picture he took of himself smiling and waving to the camera, holding a note. The note is believed to have said, I have had a happy life and thank the Lord. Goodbye and may God bless all. Later, he was found dead by a group of hunters. The hunters were looking for a shelter for the night when they came across the bus where Chris was staying in. But when they entered, they discovered Chris laying in his sleeping bag at the back of the bus. His manes were already decomposing. Now, the last thing Chris ever wrote read, Day 107 beautiful blueberries. Then days 108 through 112 contained no words, they just had slashes. And on day 113, there was no entry at all. So maybe it was some toxic berry that killed him. But still, this photo is super eerie, especially because of the sign he was holding. It's like he knew he wasn't going to make it. Coming in at number five, we have Nikola Tesla, one of the greatest minds to ever grace the earth. This dude was straight up one of the smartest people who has ever lived. If it wasn't for this guy, we wouldn't have the radio, we wouldn't have access to electricity the way that we do today. And even though he has nothing to do with the company Tesla that makes electric cars, there would be a solid chance that those electric cars wouldn't be running right now if it wasn't for the inventions that this man made. This was the last known picture of the inventor. He looks like he was ill, but he was actually mostly thin because he had changed his diet to eating very light. He wouldn't eat meat and he mostly lived off bread, honey, and vegetable juices. Probably the saddest part about the end of 
Tesla's life is that he basically had no money, although he did find pleasure in pigeons. For some reason, the inventor had an obsession with pigeons. He would go to the park and feed them and even said that they gave him some of the ideas for his inventions. That's the secret. We've got to start hanging out with more pigeons. In our fourth spot, we have James Dean. On September 30th, 1955, James Dean died in a car accident at only 24 years old. It's said that he was driving fast and suddenly had to swerve out of the way to avoid an oncoming car, but ended up hitting it almost head on. It's said that Dean died instantly, but his passenger survived with injuries. That day, Dean was photographed posing with the very car he later died in. In fact, that car is said to be cursed. He only owned it for nine days before his death. Later, after he died, the car rolled off the back of a truck and crushed the legs of a mechanic. Then the car's parts were dissembled and installed into other cars around the world. All those car owners also got into deadly crashes. So Dean's last picture was literally with a cursed car that killed him. Coming in at number three, we have Aaliyah. Aaliyah was a rising star in the R&B community and it seemed that she was going to be the next star in the music industry. Literally everyone who was into music was talking about her. Before she was 22 years old, she had already won 14 awards and been nominated for 73 awards through different music organizations. There's a good portion of us who don't even have our driver's license at 22, but her death would shock the world. Either one of those two pictures is thought to be the last of Aaliyah. They didn't have timestamps on every last picture back then, so we don't know exactly which one it is. But Aaliyah would board a plane that was headed to the Bahamas. It should have been a nice short trip, but the plane crashed. Out of nowhere, the next big thing in music was gone. In our second spot, we have John Lennon. On December 8th, 1980, John Lennon was assassinated outside of his Manhattan apartment. Earlier that day, Lennon was photographed signing autographs for fans. The last photo of him was him signing an autograph for the man who would later murder him. It's so eerie. The photo literally foreshadows his fate. He was literally pictured with his killer. Later that night, the man in the photo, David Chapman, returned to Lennon's apartment and waited outside for him. When he came down, Chapman shot him four times in the back. That's just way too freaky for me. And coming in at the number one spot, we have Marilyn Monroe. I mean, what didn't Marilyn Monroe do? It's thought that she changed how women could represent themselves in the public eye. She was one of the biggest beauty icons of all time. It's thought that she had an affair with the President of the United States. She was a bona fide legend and she may never be forgotten. This was the last known picture taken of the superstar. She was hanging out with one of her buddies, Buddy Greco, who was a famous jazz musician of the time. Man, jazz has changed a lot. It used to be the coolest thing in town. There's no way you could be playing jazz now and it would get you into the arms of Scarlett Johansson. On the record, her death was deemed a suicide, but off the record, it seemed that the CIA might have taken her out. She knew too many secrets from being close to the president. They couldn't let those secrets leak out. Starting off at our number 10 spot, we have Taylor with an E. Last year, near the end of the year, Taylor with an E posted a TikTok and then kind of ghosted the app for a while and it had people super freaked out and wondering what happened. The video was of her in Germany, where she is not from, and there were some mysterious sounds from outside of the room that she was in. She was clearly really freaked out in the video, and when she stopped posting after, people began to speculate that something terrible might have happened to her. She commented a few times on her own video explaining that her sister had told her to never open the door for anyone in the area that they were in, and also that she was home alone for the next two hours, which obviously made her stressful situation even scarier. Well, we eventually heard from Taylor again, thank goodness, and while she hasn't actually addressed what happened to her on TikTok, it's good to know that she is safe. There is a rumor that people may have actually ended up breaking into the house and that maybe she isn't allowed to speak about it if there's an investigation going on, but that has yet to be confirmed. In our number nine spot today, we have Elle. The TikTok user SigsFR, whose name is Elle, gave her followers a huge scare earlier this year. Elle posted a video on TikTok of her bruised body saying that she had been kidnapped. She said that she didn't know exactly where she was, but knew that she was somewhere in Arkansas. In the comments of a video, she said that she knew the man that had kidnapped her and that his last name was Colarelli. And people on TikTok began contacting the Arkansas police. Elle also said that she would not be posting any more videos on TikTok because she said that she knew the man was about to take her life. 
People were absolutely freaking out and blowing the story up. People suspected the man she said is her kidnapper to be her ex-boyfriend, and people were also saying that she was using Morse code messages. Ella said that she couldn't call the police because her kidnapper would be able to hear the call, and this was the first red flag for people since there's a ton of ways to contact the authorities. The next red flag was the fact that Elle posted her Venmo, and people actually started donating. To get to the end of this story, basically the Arkansas State Police did end up investigating to find out what was going on, and they actually ended up finding Elle. It turns out, she faked the whole thing. They haven't released a ton of details on exactly what was going on, but Elle has stopped posting on TikTok, which is probably the right move for now. I feel really bad for the people who were worried and who sent her money. In our number 8 spot today, we have LaCarica McNeil. Last year, 11-year-old Memphis resident LaCarica was reported missing. She was last seen on a weekend morning leaving her home and hadn't made any contact with her mom after that, which is obviously a great cause for concern because she's so young. She had apparently left her home with an older man that she had met on TikTok, which really just heightened the urgency of the case. The police description that was released after her disappearance said that she was last seen wearing a shirt with hearts on it and that she was just 4 feet 3 inches and only 55 pounds. This really paints a picture for just how small and potentially helpless she may have been. This investigation ended up prompting the question, how safe is TikTok really? In an amazing turn of events, LaCarica ended up being found and returned safe and sound, which is truly the best outcome for this really scary situation. I'm so glad that she ended up being okay and that this story has a happy ending. In our number seven spot today, we have Arlene Martinez. Earlier this year, a TikTok user was away from the platform for a while, but it wasn't long before fans found out what happened and it was all over the news. A 20-year-old TikToker named Arlene was filming a video for the platform that was supposed to depict a fake kidnapping. The video was a larger production with at least 10 people involved in the filming on this day. Arlene was tied to a chair and was acting out a scene in which she was struggling with the people who had fake kidnapped her. In a really sad turn of events, for some unknown reason, a loaded handgun was used as a prop in the video and it ended up firing, shooting and killing Arlene. There was actually a video posted of what the scene was like before this fatal moment. There has been a Facebook memorial page set up for people who love and miss her to go and share their memories with others. Moving on to our number six spot. Okay, so this one is about a person who posts on TikTok, but they are more successful on Vigo which is an extremely similar app that is made by the same creators of TikTok. Earlier this year in January, a 21-year-old TikToker and Vigo star who goes by the name Jasmine on the apps went missing from Delhi where she had traveled to for a performance. Jasmine's husband filed a missing persons report on January 7th. He said that she had left on December 31st for the performance and her phone was switched off on December 2nd and no one had heard from her since. Police quickly began their investigation and news began to spread of her disappearance. Ten days after the husband had filed the missing persons report, we finally heard some news. Jasmine actually ended up resurfacing and told a local channel that she had to run away because her husband and family-in-law tortured her. She said she never disappeared and that if you checked her husband's phone records, you would see that they had been in contact. This story is so crazy and has so many twists and turns in it. I'm really glad that Jasmine was able to get herself out of a dangerous situation and then she ended up being okay. Moving on to number five and our halfway mark. This story is a little bit different, but is super interesting. In 2016, a woman came home to find that her husband had left the house that they shared with their two children. She tried as hard as she could to find him, but was never able to find out where he went. She even filed the missing persons report with the police, but to no avail. Fast forward three years later to 2019, and a family relative thinks that she spots the husband in a video on TikTok. She of course quickly forwards it to the wife for confirmation. After watching the TikTok, she realizes that it is her husband and shows it to the police right away. The police ended up being able to track him down and confirm that it really was him. It's so crazy how the For You page literally helped solve a missing person's case. Moving on to number four. 
In July of last year, two teenagers attempted an extremely dangerous TikTok video. Danish and Ashik were out for an evening walk when they arrived at a bridge. On the bridge was a group of people around their age who were performing different kinds of stunts and tricks to film for TikToks. The boys decided to join in on the fun and Danish ended up climbing onto the railing of the bridge before diving into the water below while Ashik filmed. After he captured the video, Ashik followed his friend and climbed over the railing to jump in the water as well. Danish ended up being rescued immediately by local divers who luckily just happened to be in the area, but unfortunately Ashik could not be located, even by the authorities once they were called. Lots of people tried to help in the search but were unsuccessful. It's really sad that what was supposed to be harmless fun turned into something so sad and so scary. Moving on to number three. Okay. This one is a little different again, but I swear it is worth it because this story is pretty wild. Earlier this year, a group of teenagers were on a beach on Seattle to play around and shoot some TikToks. They ended up spotting something and went to investigate. Of course, documenting the whole thing on video to later be edited into a TikTok. As they approached, they realized that it was a suitcase and they thought that there might be money inside. As they got closer to the suitcase, they realized it smelled super bad. One girl ended up opening up the suitcase and it shows something wrapped in a garbage bag. This is when the teens rightfully decided to call the police before investigating any further. The police came and searched the whole area and found another bag as well. It turns out that the bags actually contained two bodies. This is where the police investigation began and shortly after led police to the killer. The bodies were identified as couple Jessica Lewis and Austin Wenner and it turns out that their landlord was responsible for their deaths. I guess it was some dispute over unpaid rent, which is really not a good enough reason to kill people. I'm glad these teens did the right thing and called the police so that justice could be brought for the families of the victims. In our number two spot today, we have Anna Maskovich, AKA Ref Batch. For the last 10 years, Anna has uploaded upwards of 20 videos a day to YouTube and ended up joining TikTok when it became available. Her videos tend to be a bit bizarre and are either her angrily rambling in an unintelligible mixture of Russian and English that has people who are fluent in both absolutely stumped as to what she is saying. There are a few phrases that people have been able to make out that are along the lines of her being angry at and afraid of the government, as well as being afraid of being kidnapped. The other videos she uploads are her interpretive dancing, usually in the woods and looking directly into the camera. There's a dancer who has the same name as her and her performances stopped sometime in late 2008, but there aren't any photos to verify that it's the same person for sure. People began to speculate that she may have some form of schizophrenia, but of course that's just an internet diagnosis. In 2014, someone who claimed to be her husband, who had other videos of her, explained that Anna had actually been missing after she had been taken away for speaking poorly of the Russian government. He said that she had been taken to some sort of psychiatric institute where they gave her psychotropic drugs in order to make her stop speaking out about the government. Well, this has yet to be proven for sure. It is a pretty crazy story and kind of insane to know that while he's missing his wife, he sees all of these videos of her. I hope we get a concrete answer to this someday because there really is a lot going on. There's a lot more to this story that I don't have time to cover, but the YouTuber Atrocity Guide has an amazing video on all of it that I would highly recommend you guys go and check out after you're done watching this video. In our number one spot today, we have Sarah Turney. Okay, so this one isn't a TikToker who went missing, but it is a missing persons case that TikTok helped close the case on. So please don't get mad at me because it is really interesting. Sarah Turney was 12 years old when her 17 year old sister Alyssa went missing. This happened on May 17th, 2001 and ever since that day, Sarah has known that it was her dad, Michael, who was Alyssa's stepfather. There was never anyone charged with Alyssa's disappearance and presumed death, but Sarah just knew. Sarah began to post on TikTok as well as her website dedicated to the case, all of the evidence that she had pointing towards her dad. Things like the fact that he would follow her around and record her, and that there was at least one hidden camera inside of the house. 
Things like how he was the one who unexpectedly picked her up from school and was the last one to see her on that day. You know, just general, uncomfortable, creepy things. Michael also kept changing his story about that day and night, which just adds another layer of suspicion. In an amazing turn of events, Sarah's voice was finally heard, and in August of this year, her father ended up being charged with second degree Sarah of course plans to attend every court hearing and every day of trial when it begins. I couldn't be happier for her and I really hope that she sees justice served for her and Alyssa. Mm -hmm.